Hey guys, we're back with another video from Bocho's brother up in northern Sweden. And today we're going to talk about this book, Strongholds and Followers. This is a companion and expansion book for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. And I just think it's absolutely awesome. Uh, there's probably about 10 points we can look at here with this book that can add to your Dungeons and Dragons. So without further ado, let's take a look. So as I said, the name of the book is Strongholds and Followers. And what Strongholds and Followers is going to do for you is when you're on a Dungeons and Dragons adventure or a campaign and you're making tons of gold and getting treasure and building renown, you'll actually be able to use that uh, with this book to improve your character's lifestyle. Um, you get the introduction. So here you have the stronghold. This would be, uh, they explain to you how they work. The strongholds level up. Um, as a fighter or a barbarian, you would get something like a keep. And the keep can also be something such as a barbarian camp. And uh, these, these strongholds will give you units and uh, helpers. I really liked it how in the Critical Role campaign, I don't know if you're watching that, but you'll see if you uh, watch through Critical Role that uh, the player characters are actually making friends, getting NPCs. And uh, in one episode, for example, they got a pirate ship. They were on a pirate ship for a while. And so this just gives you the mechanics behind how that could work to have a pirate ship or to have a location where you're keeping your treasure, a place, a base, a place of residence. And so these first pages, here's the uh, mage tower or wizards. The warlock could also use a tower. And in the tower, you'll be able to make things like uh, your own spells um, and do some really cool stuff. Uh, warlocks and clerics would be able to um, call upon the gods for helpers, uh, which is really super cool. Depending on your alignment, you're either going to get more devilish, wicked creatures, or if you're of more of a good alignment, you might get a seraph angels coming to help you out in your adventures okay and as you continue on you have the rangers lodge the rogues tavern now this is the one we used in the dragon heist the rogues tavern and then we were using some of the npcs from the dragon heist who were uh, like a half orc um, archer uh, an elven bard and these characters they were able to help the party out and the, as members of this uh, rogues tavern the wizards library and uh, and then you get to the end of that section and you can get followers here who are not as powerful as the actual characters but they can tag along and help and they're kind of like fans or uh, yeah, helpers that would follow you around and give you that little extra boost. Another one you can get though is if you roll high on this follower chart, you can get an ally and the ally is actually more powerful than your character. It could be a storm giant, it could be a uh, ghost, it could be a dragon, it could be a demon. Here you get that list that you would roll on. So even more than having these followers help you along in your campaign, what I found coolest about it is if you have maximizers or overpowered characters that are in your group, in your adventuring group, um, maybe they've combined polearm mastery with the half orc and the barbarian, and they're doing hundreds of points of damage per round, and you've created some character that's a little bit more along the uh, vanilla road, um, what you can do instead of having to copy that and create another polearm master that has all the added effects, you can just add a follower 
to that character to make them feel just a little bit more powerful and have a little bit more uh, say in what happens in combat and battle. So as a DM, you may be thinking, hold on a second. Now my players are going to become completely overpowered and the campaign's going to be ruined because they're just going to crush everything. But they thought of that here in Strongholds and Followers, and they also have provided villain strongholds with upgrades to your monsters and their strongholds with their layer actions and extra abilities that they will be able to utilize against the characters in places like the sewers, in the desert hideout, in the dungeon, and in the mountains. Wherever your campaign takes place, you have your monsters, they have their domain, and they're gonna protect it with everything they've got. And now the fifth element of the book is you're gonna get a whole new slew of monsters that they've created specifically for that campaign, but they've also created a whole new set of monsters and gods that can be used um, either in your strongholds and followers adventure or when you combine this book with other adventures or your own homebrew. And they've come up with some pretty amazing angelic uh, creatures as well as devilish and demonic ones. And you're just briefly gonna get a little taste here of the artwork and how that, that works. So we're up to the sixth part of what you're getting out of this book. New monsters, new ideas, new fascination for your Dungeons & Dragons 5e campaign. So we're at the end of that monster section, and just when you think it's over, you get Gemstone Dragons. Now, as we all know, you've got the red, black, um, green, blue... Uh, standard dragons, which are evil, and then you have the chromantic dragons, which are the gold, platinum, brass dragons, which are good. In this book, you're going to get a whole new kind of dragon that's a neutral kind of dragon, so it can either go on your side or go against you. They're gemstone dragons. They are very powerful, and I'll tell you what, they have psionics. So if that doesn't blow your mind, I don't know what will because we don't have psionics yet in 5e and with this book you're going to get about 12 new uh, psionic abilities maybe more you get to have your mind blown one more time one last time with these inexorables the inexorables not sure if i'm pronouncing that correctly but these are kind of gods of different things like death change time, fate, destiny, this kind of thing. And at the very end, they ex explain how you can use that war um, style of play that I talked about earlier, where you, you're gonna print these cards out and you're able to have some really major battles. I would definitely think about using this in Dark Sun which is another one of my uh, favorite campaign settings um, using this battle technique. And you can find out about that in the book. We're up to the ninth thing here where you're getting new magical items, very powerful items, codex, and weapons that you would use depending on your alignment. You're gonna get a weapon and some of these weapons they hit and when they hit you get a chance that uh, some creature that's from your alignment would uh, pop out, spring out from the weapon and help fight with you for about a minute in a battle. And with the combat system here, you can really go on some pretty epic campaigns and adventures. And that's where it ends uh, with these magic items. So you're getting 10 super bonuses with this book. So that's it everybody, Strongholds and Followers. It runs for about $30 to $50. I will include the link here below and you should really check it out. I think it's the perfect component to add to any fantasy adventure, Dungeons and Dragons 5e campaign you're running. It's gonna give you something to spend your gold on. It's gonna give you new magical items, a new optional warfare system, and an amazing keep or stronghold or establishment 
tower temple to um, go home to and to keep as your base camp. Look forward to seeing you all again sometime soon. Bye for now.